Mike. Uh, okay, so Stuart Hazeldean again. So I'm just going to give you a, a brief glide path into the Lovell meeting. Uh, and uh, if, uh, because this is a special type of meeting for the Geological Society, the conveners, Mike Stevenson, you've just seen, Dave Schofield from BGS, Sebastian Geiger from Heriot Watt, who's somewhere I've seen, and Philip Ringroads from Equinor. And the meeting's co sponsored by the EAGE, just to mention that, European Association of Geoscientists. Uh, I'm chairing day one, other people chair day two and day three. I've got to tell you about the fire exits, of course, because it's Britain. So there's uh, fire exits at the back of the room, three fire exits at the back of the room. If you're in the front third, the fire exit is in the corner, not in there, otherwise you'll end up dead. Okay, out there. And then the assembly points in the uh, quadrangle outside. Okay. Uh, no fire alarms are expected. Toilets are horizontal on this floor for blokes and down in the basement for girls. And the point about this meeting is the, this is a part of a series of Brian Lovell meetings. So this is Brian Lovell. And uh, Lovell did his, uh, went to Oxford, got inspired in sedimentary rocks and then resources, did a PhD early on at Harvard and spent several years at Harvard, and then returned to the UK being lecturer at Edinburgh. And one of his key things, he was always interested in the application of his science. Okay, so eventually left the university to become chief sedimentologist and create the discipline of sedimentology in BP, really, and then became exploration manager and head of recruitment, did all that. Went to Cambridge, worked on uplift and mantle pulsing and stuff. But the point for this meeting, I think, is from about 2000 onwards and then publishing from 2005, Lovell did several articles about... Uh, the misuse of carbon, if you like. So the oil companies are responsible for getting carbon out of the ground, but not very responsible for putting carbon back into the ground. So that created a couple of transatlantic <coughs> debates between oil companies in Europe and oil companies in the United States, which really failed to reach a resolution. And uh, then Lover was president of this geological society for a couple of years and used that time. At that time, he wrote his book, Challenged by Carbon, and also uh, penetrated into the Geological Society to say, why don't we run some more applicable meetings rather than purely academic meetings? So this book, uh, Challenged by Carbon, was one of the first books to treat the carbon problem from a geological perspective and ask the question, is there a low carbon future for the oil industry whilst we continue to burn fossil fuels as we claim to be managing a transition? And I think, although that was published in 2009 or so, or you can still ask, the same question now, okay, because there's been remarkably little progress, I'll argue. So the structure of this meeting is an interdisciplinary meeting, that's the theme of the Lovell meetings, to bring people from a range of different professions and specialisms together, to bring the societal challenge into the room and to work out has geological sciences got any role in having some crossover activity to try and help sort that out. Previous meetings are there. I think this may have been the 2018 meeting, but this is the year of carbon for the Geological Society, so it's now in 2019. Day one, we're going to talk about uh, energy globally with Spencer in a moment. And then at the end of the day, we'll have a half hour or so, or 30, 40 minutes of uh, debate and discussion, which leads on to day two and day three, when other people will be lucky enough to chair this. Okay. So there is a structure and a theme and a progress to the whole three days of the meeting, rather like uh, 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 what used to be called an album in record terms. And I'll want to leave you with two slides to pose the problem. So here's the problem. So this is the growth of carbon emissions as spreads the CO2 around the world from uh, slightly after I was born, 1950s. Okay, and you can see it's inexorable and regular and catastrophic rate of growth in spite of all the words, in spite of all the renewables, in spite of all the nuclear power, in spite of all the energy efficiency. Last year uh, was several percentage growth in China, the United States, the European Union was anomalous, but every, everywhere else except Europe is busy increasing the rate of consumption of carbon, as I'm sure Pez Spencer will tell us. Uh, and the challenge is to take that 37 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide now and to turn that round into not just reduced carbon by 2050, but into negative carbon, to recapture some of the existing carbon, if you want a sustainable climate. So this is a graph derived from the IPCC 1.5 degrees report, which was out a couple of months ago. So what goes up should come down, and it's going to be up to people like us who are basically responsible for forcing the graph up by digging the stuff out, can we find ways of putting that back into the ground? So that's a theme I'd like to return to over the next few days. But I'm now 